Our scripture this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judea are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. So today is the day that we celebrate Epiphany, and it's the day that we traditionally discuss the Magi's visit to the Christ child, as we've kind of talked about already today. And when we talk about that word Epiphany, we tend to think of it in terms of coming up with an idea, one that we may have been struggling to find. Newton had an Epiphany when the apple fell on his head. Franklin had an Epiphany when he did his experiment with the kite and the key. Those are what we think about when we hear the word epiphany. It's almost become synonymous with eureka, right? Well, that's kind of what the word means, but what it actually means is a manifestation or an unveiling. Something that was hidden is now revealed. For Newton, it was gravity. For Franklin, electricity. And for the Magi, the savior of the world. Now that is truly an epiphany. The unveiling of God in this world. The unveiling of the light that will shine through the darkness. The unveiling of the one that will be most high. As we think about the Magi and, and discuss them, we often tend to focus on the gifts that they brought to Jesus. Now, the really important thing about this is these three wise men or kings, depending on the translations that you read, journeyed to give a baby born in a stable gifts and worship him. It isn't so much about what they brought, but just that they brought anything at all. See, these magi were outsiders. They were wise men traveling from afar. Their journey might sound familiar to you as well. See, they traveled across a vast nothingness in order to reach Jesus, across a dry land, not causing them just thirst in their bodies, but they traveled it because of the thirst in their hearts and their souls. You see, just like those wise men, we too were outsiders trying to find a way to quench that thirst of our hearts and souls. So what's the thirstiest you have ever been in your life? Have you ever been so dehydrated that your lips start to crack and you can't even produce saliva anymore? Well, I'll tell you the thirstiest I've ever been in my life. See, the first deer I was able to harvest, I took on state game lands. And I cannot begin to tell you how happy I was to get that deer after years and years of trying and failing. 
But there was only one problem, and that was that I was quite far away from my vehicle at the time, and I was going to have to drag that deer out on my own because I was alone. And I wasn't prepared for that. And I wasn't prepared for that because I had failed so many times in the past, I figured, what's, go what's going to be different this time? And so I had dressed for the cold weather as it was supposed to be cool that day, but as it happened so very often, the meteorologists were wrong and it turned out to be a warm day that day. And it was much warmer than I had planned for. And as I dragged that deer out, I was sweating profusely, as you guys well know that I am great at doing. And I didn't bring any water with me that day because again, I figured nothing was gonna happen. So I had nothing to replenish my system, and by the time I got to my vehicle, it was all I could do to lift that deer into the trunk. Um, it had snowed previously to that day when it was warm, and I was so thirsty that I was looking at a puddle next to my car um, after I was done and thinking, you know, I'm almost there, but I'm not quite there today to stoop down and drink from that puddle. But when we think about thirst, that is what we focus on. We focus on our physical needs and not our spiritual needs. But we have times in our lives when we wander into the desert spiritually and we forget to take that one thing that can quench our thirst with us, and that is Jesus. As I said, the Magi, they were outsiders looking for what they needed in order to quench their thirst in their hearts and souls. Now, we in the modern church, we do not often consider that nearly all of us were outsiders in the kingdom of God at one point. We who have had generations that were part of his kingdom in our past, we forget that we were not the chosen people at one time. I'll remind you that until the ministry of Christ, the Israelites were the chosen people of God. And you see, unless you happen to descend from them, at some point, your family were outsiders. Now, while we do not think about how our ancestors may have been outsiders of the kingdom of heaven, we sure can think about how maybe we have been in our own lives at times. I know that for many of us, we grew up in the church. We were brought to church nearly every week to services, and then we began to find that we were part of the kingdom of God. For each of us, there was a moment where we had to make that decision for ourselves. In the Methodist tradition, it is when you are confirmed. In the tradition that I grew up in, it was when I made the decision to be baptized. Regardless of your faith tradition that you were a part of, there is a moment in your life when you had to say, yes, Lord. Yes, I accept you as my Savior, and I will follow you. For some of you, the decisions were made in an older age. You didn't grow up in the church. There was no one to bring you each week. And it is much more miraculous that you were able to commit to the Lord when you didn't have that modeled for you. And if you've ever wondered which one causes more rejoicing in heaven, I point you to the story of the prodigal son. See, it doesn't matter how you came to the Lord, only that you did. And if you find yourself questioning if you need to come to the Lord today, I'd like to talk to you more about it. But the fact remains that all of us at some point, we were outsiders. The birth of Christ and his ministry changes all of that for us. We have the opportunity to find that one thing that will quench our thirst for our hearts and souls. That one thing that takes us from being outsiders to being insiders. We can see how the glory of God has shown this to us through the birth of Christ. We often think of just the miracle itself when we think about the glory of God. We think about how he was born to Mary, a virgin. But the glory of God is shown in his birth, not just in that miracle, but by what it would mean to a world of outsiders. One way that God's glory is shown is all about inclusion and belonging. All people are now equal under the light of Christ. There is no more outsider or insider based upon your birth. We all have the opportunity to be part of the kingdom of God. 
When people ask, why does the church concern itself with the ideas of justice and equality for people that are not the same as them? Well, here's your answer. We are all children of God. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter how much money your family has. We are all God's children. That is why we concern ourselves with supporting causes that call for justice and equality because Jesus did the same thing. He preached to the poor. He preached and included women in his ministry at a time when they were still considered property. He brought the message of good news to the Samaritans, people that were viewed as unclean by the Israelites. He spoke with prisoners. He touched and healed lepers. See, there was no one left outside when it came to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Another way that God's glory is shown to us through the birth of Christ is to answer this question, who is the sovereign in this world? Is it a king? Is it people that crave only power and wealth for themselves, sacrificing others in order to gain them? No, it is Christ. It is the one who preached that message of unconditional love and light for all people. You see, because of his birth and his ministry, we no longer have to be outsiders to God. We can be freely welcomed into his kingdom. Now, if you find yourself out there wondering, thinking, where can I find a place to belong? Well, I want you to know that there is a place for you in the kingdom of God. And I want you to know that the people of this church will welcome you as a brother or sister into the, his kingdom. If you're finding your heart and your soul thirsting, I will remind you of the words of this old hymn. It's not one that we commonly sing here, but one that we sang growing up, and it's called There's a Fountain Free. And it goes like this. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh haste, to drink. It's a fount of love from a source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Thirsty soul, hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. Amen. My challenge for you this week is this. Are you feeling dried out like the Magi? Replenish yourself with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.